الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله so uh, the topic today is know your prophet. Uh, so last week when we discussed, we talked about um, you know the importance of uh, choosing uh, the role model, and we talked about the fact that the best role model that we could take is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is kind of continuing in a series that uh, you know entitled "Know Your Prophet," where the focus here is on. Uh, specific character traits of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so that every time we have a chance to have a session like this then we go over a specific character trait of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we highlight it uh, we talk about it from uh, you know the Quran and from the Sunnah and how Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he embodied that character trait to delve into that you know we cannot talk about somebody that we don't know that we don't even know how they look so that's why uh, I thought the first thing to start with is to talk about the physical description of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, but let me uh, take a step back um, and then remind everyone where we are these days. You know, this is something I mentioned last week, but more so this week. We are on the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. These are the most important 10 nights of, uh, you know, the year, basically. You know, this is a time to focus on worship, on reconnecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a time to reconnect with the Qur'an and make it a centerpiece in our worship and our daily life as well. It's a time of reflection, reassessment and review of the previous year. You know, what went good and what went wrong and how we should fix it. And this is a time to plan the year ahead and work on instilling new good habits in our life and getting rid of those bad habits that we uh, evaluated through our kind of self-reflection process you know this is a time to get involved in our community service and alleviating the hardship of others specifically at this specific time of calamity and you know with uh, everything that's going on around us you know this is a time also to commit to the religion and to commit to connecting with our beloved prophet this is a time where we need to commit to know him and make him our role model, our number one person in our life. This is the time to commit to be a true follower to the Prophet You know, how do we start? We just take the first step. We start knowing him We start learning about him. We start learning about the different aspects of his life You know, my last time I mentioned that there is really full-fledged Syria classes going on for the sisters and the brothers that I encourage everyone to take uh, advantage of. Uh, you know, Ajial Center is running, you know, uh, CR classes for both brothers and sisters, and I'm sure there is others as well. So, you know, and everything is going online these days. So there is no really, no excuses uh, for us to not know our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, when he talks about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how we should look up to him and how we should connect with him. He said, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَخْبِرْ لَكُمْ بُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O oh Muhammad, if you should love Allah, then follow me. So Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. And Allah is forgiven and merciful. I will use this ayah uh, um, you know, over and over every time we start these sessions because this is a central piece. You know, there is no way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through attaining the love of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through connecting to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, the, the, the point here is we need to show it in action. We have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to materialize that love. We cannot claim we love him when we're not following him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, the Prophet ﷺ has also a very interesting hadith. He said, Sallallahu uh, Abu Huraira was uh, recording on the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Kullu ummati yadkhulun al jannata illa man aba. Kila wa man yaaba ya Rasulullah. Kala man ata'ani dakhla al jannah wa man asani qad aba. The Prophet ﷺ said, Every one of my ummah will enter jannah except those who refuse. The, the Sahaba were shocked. They said, Ya Rasulullah. Obeys me will enter Jannah, and whoever disobeys me has refused. So this is Subhanallah the teaching uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, 
There is no shred of doubt about the importance of obeying, obeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, following his teaching. You know, not changing the deen to please our whims and desires or sticking, you know, uh, basically to please other people around us. You know, we need to stick to his mannerism portray the best Muslim behavior we could, we could uh, portray, specifically in this day and age, and specifically in this country. You know, we're living with non-Muslims, so we need to portray the best of mannerism of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We need to show his character traits, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, you don't want to go on the Day of Judgment. We don't want to go on the Day of Judgment when somebody would come and say, I, I you know, the, the behavior of this person, the character trait of this person was the reason why I did not, not join Islam, SubhanAllah. So we have to be really mindful of that. Now, you know, let's start with the description of the Prophet ﷺ, the physical description of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. You know, let's ask ourselves a few questions. Why it is important to know the physical description of the Prophet ﷺ? You know, can you really see the Prophet ﷺ in your dreams? You know, you see sometimes you hear Mashayikh or some, uh, you know, people around you that say, you know, or claim someone saw him or so and so saw him or this Sheikh saw him in the dream, you know, um, can can that happen? Can the shaitan claim to be the Prophet وسلم, in a dream or in a, or in a vision? You know, should you concern yourself with dreams and visions? You know, if you, um, you know, uh, if uh, you saw someone ordering you to do something in your dream or vision claiming to be the Prophet, would you do it? You know, so these are kind of uh, uh, legitimate question uh, that I thought um, we should ask ourselves and hopefully they would explain to you as well why it's also, it gives you another perspective, why it's important to know the uh, description of the Prophet First of all, let's establish that there is no way prescribed in the Sharia for the one who wants to see the Prophet So So, you know, there is no way that you could, you say, you could do these, you know, one, two, three, and then you would be able to see the Prophet uh, uh, you know, uh, in a dream or a vision. That's something that doesn't exist. So if somebody comes to you and says, you know, do these, and then uh, that will happen, you know, then, you know, you know, you know, that person is not giving you the best of the advice. The one who sees the Prophet وسلم, in a dream has to see him in his true form, you know, at any stage of his life. So if a person claims to have seen you know, um, uh, the Prophet وسلم, with a completely white beard, right? Then that per person did not see the Prophet وسلم, because at any stage of his life, وسلم, he never had a white, uh, fully white beard. وسلم. So this is not the Prophet. وسلم. The shaitan cannot appear in the true form of the Prophet, وسلم, but he can appear in other forms. So this is very important to establish, you know. Um, it was narrated by Abu Huraira. You know, he said that I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, whoever sees me in a dream has seen me in reality. And the shaitan cannot take my shape. You know, this is in Al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, uh, Sahih Al-Bukhari and also in Muslim. You know, Ibn Sirin commenting on this hadith, he says, if he sees him in his true image, meaning if you see the Prophet ﷺ in his true image with his proper description that is recorded in the seerah, in the books of seerah, right? So, you will, you know, if you look up this hadith, you will find uh, uh, bad translations for it, for it. So, for example, uh, one of the translations I found that whoever sees me in a dream has seen me uh, oh, uh, uh, awake, basically, you know, and that's a bad translation for the Arabic version of the of the hadith. Basically, the Prophet is saying, whoever sees me in a dream is has has seen me in reality as long as they see me with my true image, with my proper description, right? So if a man, you know, told Ibn Sirin, this is, Ibn Sirin is one of the most famous, uh, uh, you know, scholars who interpret uh, visions and dreams. So if a man told Ibn Sirin that he had seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream, he would say, describe to me the one whom you saw. If he gave him a description that, did not rec uh, that he did not recognize, he would say you did not see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is very important to establish. This is the way that the, uh, the set of the, the scholars used to uh, define whether a person is being tricked by the shaitan or they indeed saw the Prophet Al-Hakim narrated via Asim uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, he said, my father told me, I said to Ibn Abbas, I saw the Prophet وسلم, uh, in a dream. He said, describe him to me. He said, I mentioned Al-Hasan Ibn Ali, the, uh, the uh, you know, the grandson of the Prophet وسلم. He said, he looked at him. He said, I said, he looked like him. He said, you did indeed see the Prophet 
So this is uh, very important that the, uh, the scholars did not, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, leave this uh, kind of uh, unexplained or un without any guidance uh, for us that, you know, there has to be a specific guidance for somebody to claim that they saw the Prophet The other thing also, uh, you know, that well, you know, to answer some of the questions I posed earlier is that the Muslim, Muslim should not concern himself with dreams and visions. This is like a general guidelines from all the scholars, right? You know, basing our affairs on, on them and forgetting about, you know, what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoined us in terms of act of worship uh, to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important, right? You know, if it happens, it happens, but this is not, that should not be a quest and that should not be an obsession for a Muslim also. The other uh, point to, to make clear that the Muslim who is following the Sunnah, you know, uh, sees the Prophet Sallallahu in his heart. He's so connected with the Prophet Sallallahu that the more he follows him, the more he will see him. So when he goes out of his house or goes to the mosque or do, does wudu or does any act of worship, he remembers what the Prophet Sallallahu used to do. When he prays or performs Hajj or Umrah, he follows the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu when he buys and sells and interacts with people, he acts according to the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. When he or she is at home with the family and the children, they follow the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. That's the true connection to the Prophet ﷺ. And that's how you start seeing the Prophet ﷺ with the heart, you know, subhanAllah. So let's talk about the face of the Prophet ﷺ and how the Sahaba saw the Prophet ﷺ. The Jabir ibn Abdullah said, I once saw Rasulullah sallallahu on the night of full moon. On that night, he wore red clothing. Um, at time, I looked at the, uh, at the full moon and at time at Rasulullah sallallahu Ultimately, I came to the conclusion that Rasulullah sallallahu was more handsome, beautiful, and more radiant than the full moon sallallahu So this is how the Sahaba saw the Prophet sallallahu You know, um, now, there is just one nuance here that the hadith says he wore red clothing. The Prophet ﷺ never full, uh, wore fully red clothing. The, he, the, the scholars say the, the, the clothing that uh, uh, the Prophet was wearing had a red stitching in it. So this is how the Sahaba saw the Prophet ﷺ. You know, this is, uh, you know, how, um, you know, uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah described him. You know, also, uh, there is another account that we have. Uh, that uh, a story of a Bedouin who accepted Islam. So this Bedouin enters the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and says, who amongst you is Muhammad? He was pointed to the Prophet Now, So this tells you that when he entered, the Prophet was, was with the Sahaba, yet he dis not, did not distinguish himself from the, uh, the Sahaba. He did not have any guards. He was not sitting on an elevated chair or couch or whatever it is. He didn't have extra pillows around him that would give the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the indication to the person who's coming from outside who doesn't know the prophet that this is, uh, you know, their leader. This is their kind of, uh, you know, imam, right? So he enters the message and he says, "Who amongst you is Muhammad?" He said he was pointed to the prophet sallallahu He looked at the prophet sallallahu and then he said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah." The companion was were astonished. They were puzzled. So the man enters. He clearly doesn't know the prophet. He asks which one he, uh, he is, and then without any ask, asking any questions, without clarifying any subject about Islam, he just takes his shahada. So the Sahaba asked him, you know, how come? He said, this is not the face of a liar, subhanAllah. This is, subhanAllah, how... You know, uh, the impact when he saw the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, this, this man is not a liar. This is not the face of a liar. You know, this, this tells you how, subhanAllah, also the Prophet, how humble he was, you know, when he was sitting with the, with the Sahaba. You know, compare that to other leaders. Some of the leaders that we have right now, whether, you know, uh, presidents or, you know, uh, prime ministers or kings or whatever, you know, and all the dictators that we have and how they have all these kind of protocols and all these kind of, uh, you know, uh, surrounding and guards and all that kind of stuff, you know, let alone, you know, even in companies right now, we, you have like uh, with the CEOs and executives and all that kind of stuff, all that kind of level, uh, you know, of protection and uh, level of, you know, kind of uh, separation with the people who are working with, with them, subhanAllah. Yet with the Prophet, you know, it's a completely different style of leadership.
he's given us the true example of leadership you know subhanallah this is the teaching of the prophet وسلم, that if you come to the leader with his companions you know whether they are the their co-workers his teammates as you you know if you want to kind of project it to what we have right now then you wouldn't be able to distinguish him he's just with them like them doing what they are doing however if you ask who is the leader without any hesitation all of them they will point to him like what the sahaba did with the prophet so this is very important and this is how umar and abu bakr and the sahaba understood it subhanallah they and then they implemented it in their lives subhanallah you know the biographers are taught you know and narrated to us uh, an incident that happened during the time of umar ibn khattab that when he became the uh, leader uh, the sahabi uh, when they were in persia they captured the leader of hamazan he was the king of al ahwaz al hormuzan he, he was the king of the Al Ahwaz as a prisoner in the 17th year of Hijrah. And with him, you know, you know, they brought him with a delegation, you know, uh, back to the Medina. Uh, Anas ibn Malik and uh, Ahnaf ibn Qais were, you know, kind of uh, leading them to back to the Medina. So when they reached Al Medina, they kind of clothed him in his garments with, uh, with his, you know, kind of uh, uh, crown and everything just to show how big of, uh, you know, of a prisoners they caught. And then they wanted to take him to Umar ibn Khattab. So they were looking for the Umar ibn Khattab. They went to his house and then they said, no, you know, look for him at the masjid. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar was coming by and he said, yeah, I think he's in the masjid. So they went to the masjid, they couldn't find him. And then people were pointing them from one side to another, like one corner of Medina to the other corner, you know, and the Hum uh, Hurmuzan was so shocked because he was expecting, you know, that this Khalifa, this man who's conquering their land, he has a big palace you know, with kind of a long lineup of guards and everything that would be, he would be able to see from miles away. Yet, like, they were, like, going, you know, left and right in Medina looking for him. Until some people told them, you know, look under this, these palm trees. So they went, and then they saw this image of Omar, you know. Omar was uh, sleeping, you know, under uh, a palm tree. He was putting uh, his hoof, you know, his shoes under his head, as a pillow, and he was sweating because it was hot. So al Muzan uh, said, uh, you know, where is Omar? Then the, uh, the Sahaba said, uh, that's him. He said, where are the guards? Where are the stewards? You know, they said, no, there, no, there is no guard. So he said, you ruled. So you were just to the people. So you were safe from them. So you slept, O oh, Omar. That's a famous saying that he said, you know, that kind of summarizes you know, uh, Islam, that, uh, you know, how the essence of the deen, and that's how the Prophet Sallallahu taught them, is that you want to rule the people, you want to be just to them, and that will give you safety, and that would allow you, subhanAllah, to sleep without fear, uh, because subhanAllah, you are under the protection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this is very important to uh, kind of establish. Now, with this, let's delve into the description of the Prophet You know, the best sources for the description of the Prophet وسلم, the physical description of the Prophet وسلم, is the hadith of Umm Ma'bad and the description from Ali as well when he was describing to, uh, to his son, may Allah be pleased with him, and then the description from Anas, may Allah be pleased with them. So there are three sources for the description. However, you know, the most uh, comprehensive one uh, is the description of Umm Ma'bad in the hadith of Umm Ma'bad. So this is considered to be the best description ever of the Prophet Sallallahu You know, she saw him for a few moments when he was immigrating from Mecca uh, to Medina. He stayed in her tent for a few moments before uh, completing his journey. And she was impressed by the Prophet Sallallahu You know, she paid uh, extraordinary attention to all his moves and, and gestures, you know. So let's uh, let's start with the with the with the kind of the story. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was emigrating from Mecca to Medina. He stopped by the uh, tent of Umm Ma'bad, and he was uh, accompanied by uh, Abu Bakr and Ibn, um, Amir Ibn Fuhaira, 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 the slave of Abu Bakr and the son of Uraiqat, who uh, guided them on their way. They passed by Umm Ma'bad. Uh, you know, she's from the tribe of uh, Khuza'a, who did not know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were really thirsty at the time when they stopped. 
So their number one reason to stop by her tent is to try to get some something to drink. So the Prophet Sallallahu and his companion asked for some milk and you know if there is any food, any meat, any dates that uh, you know uh, they could get, and they were ready to pay for it. However, you know they did not get any of that. You know, uh, so Subhanallah, the Ummu Ma'bad had nothing. You know, um, you know, you know, Subhanallah. She said, "By Allah, if we had had anything, we would not be lacking lacking in showing hospitality." So the Prophet Sallallahu looked uh, around and he saw a goat, uh, you know, at the shaded side of the tent. And the Prophet Sallallahu asked Ummu Ba'bad, "Does this goat have any milk?" So that she said, "It's she's too weak to have any. Like this is a very weak. It's it's a sick." animal that my husband left behind he took the rest of the animals to go uh, you know uh, get uh, some uh, you know uh, food but you know this is too weak to go so he left it uh, behind so the prophet sallam said can you allow me to milk it subhanallah so look at the mannerism of the prophet sallam you know he didn't proceed you know without permission or anything he asked for the permission from ummu mabad and he said can you allow me to milk it so the uh, the woman you know she was replied like technically she was said, like are you you know, uh, crazy, what, what are you thinking? You know, subhanAllah, I'm just telling you, this is a weak, sick animal that's a dying animal. And then you're telling me like to milk it. But she said, if you see any milk in her, then you may milk her. The Prophet Sallallahu then called for the goat and touched the other with his hand and mentioned the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa And then suddenly, this is the first miracle that happened in front of her eyes. This, the, the other suddenly sw uh, swelled and started flowing with milk. He then called for a vessel that whose content could be enough for the entire group. And then he squeezed the milk, filled the whole thing, and then gave Umm Ma'bad some milk, and then gave the group, you know, uh, uh, to drink. Gave uh, Abu Bakr and uh, his uh, servant, you know, to drink. And they drank so fast, you know, because they were so thirsty, subhanAllah. Then, the, and the, until this, the Prophet Sallallahu did not drink. And then he said, you know, waiting for them to finish, he said the, the cup bearer drinks last, sallallahu alayhi wa Then he milked the goat once more, and the people drank slowly, as opposed to the first time, subhanAllah. And then the third time, he milked uh, again the goat, and then he gave it to Umm Ma'bad, and then he left. So he, he and her, his companion, they mounted their camel and moved on. After their departure, the, you know, uh, the husband of Umm Ma'bad, you know, Aktham came, herding the the flock of sheep that he had. So this is, the, you know, this is as much as the time that the Prophet Sallallahu stayed. He just stopped, you know, got some milk, and then he left. And then from this, we get the best description of the Prophet Sallallahu You know, the uh, the husband said, you know, he saw the milk in the in the tent, and he said, Umm Ma'bad, what is this? Where have you got this milk while there is no goat? with milk here his wife answered a blessed man passed by us she then told him the story in details with the word a blessed you know uh, man used by umm mabad we would like to have a short reflection you know subhanallah umm mabad uttered this word spontaneously naturally like without any thinking you know the words just slipped from her mouth having been influenced emotionally you know with what she saw you know subhanallah her husband Abu Mabad was amazed by the news his wife told him. He said, describe, describe him to me, subhanAllah. So Umm Mabad here started the description of the Prophet Sallallahu You know, Umm Mabad told, the, uh, told uh, the husband, you know, describing the Prophet Sallallahu She said, I saw a man who is clearly handsome and with a beautiful face. He is well built. He is neither blemished by a big stomach nor did he have an unusually small head. The pupils of his eyes are very dark. And the areas around the pupils of his, of his eyes are so white. The edges, you know, uh, um, of his eyelids are long, subhanAllah. His eyebrows are perfectly closed. He has a very dark hair. You know, there is no, the, the Prophet Sallallahu did not have any white hair until very late in his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, to the left and uh, right by, uh, by the ears.
that's where he had uh, most of the white hair and there was few in his beard, you know. She said he had a rather long neck and a thick beard. When he kept silence, he is always contemplative. So he looks thoughtful. He is reflective. He looks reflective, dignified, majestic, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he's silent. And when he spe speaks, eminence and splendor shows in his words. His words are like sliding uh, string pearls, very well organized speech, very clear, no interruptions, no humming, subhanAllah. He is a gifted speaker whose words are neither too few nor too much, just to the point, you know, subhanAllah. He has the clearest words and the most audible voice when he speaks, you know, subhanAllah. His voice is sweet, clear, and decisive. He's ne neither vaguely short nor boringly, pointlessly long, subhanAllah. When you look at him from afar, he is the most handsome of all people. You know, subhanAllah, I cannot uh, stop reflecting on this beautiful description that she's giving compared to the fact that she was with him for minutes, moments, subhanAllah. Yet she was able to, uh, you know, uh, to come up with this beautiful description, subhanAllah. He is like, a, you know, and when he, we, you move closer to him. So she said, when you look at him from afar, he is the most handsome of all people, you know. When he, you move closer to him, he is the most pleasant of them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will never be tired looking at him, of looking at him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is like a branch between two branches. Now she's referring to the Sahabi that are with him. She, she's saying he's like a branch between two branches. He is the most handsome of the three, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the most important of them. He has companions who honor him. When he speaks, they listen to his words, and when he commands, they hasten to carry out his orders. They serve him and rally around him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know. And on the hadith of Anas, you know, um, he added, he does not frown or nag, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Ma'bad, when he heard this speech, he said, by Allah, this is the Quraysh man. This is the man of Quraysh, and if I uh, see him, I will follow him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another narration, he said, I intend to follow him if I am able to. And this had actually happened. Actually, Umm Mabed and her husband headed uh, to Medina and embraced Islam and uh, swore allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ and kept his companion until he passed away. May Allah be pleased with, uh, with Umm Mabed. the most comprehensive uh, description. What a beautiful description from Umm Mabed. Uh, you know, uh, may Allah be pleased with her. As I said, this is considered by the scholars as the most complete description of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, I hope I gave it justice, and I hope that uh, we all got a little bit closer to our uh, beloved Prophet Sallallahu as we went through his beautiful description. You know, may Allah re reunite us with him and bless us uh, as he blessed Umm Mabad to see him up close and be able to be his companions in the paradise. You know, SubhanAllah, I cannot stress enough uh, the importance of making dua and supplications in these blessed nights uh, for the doors of uh, Jannah are open you know, in these days, and sincere du'as are being accepted. We ask Allah to reunite us with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, in the hereafter, and that he would be pleased with us uh, in the hereafter, SubhanAllah. You know, with that, I want to touch base on uh, one important uh, character trait of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, which is, uh, sorry, there is, uh, yes. So, I wanted to uh, follow up after this description to talk about one, uh, give you some glimpses of the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu And this is the theme of this series, is that we will be stopping on a character trait by a character trait of the Prophet Sallallahu So we had his physical description. You know, hopefully that's something that we could go back to every once in a while that we can contemplate on, that we could try to delve and try to know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That, uh, you know, and we create an image in, uh, of him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our heads. But also, you know, um, through the most important way to know the Prophet Sallallahu is through his actions and through his teaching Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his teaching is really very prevalent in his 
and how we dealt, he dealt with others, Muslims and non-Muslims, through specific character traits that he embodied, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the purpose of the Know Your uh, Prophet series is that we take a character trait every time, and then we look at it and we see how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam enjoined it and how he embodied it, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's talk about some of the glimpses of his um, lenience, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كونوا تفضل غليظ القلب لا فضوا من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر فإذا عزمت فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين الله سبحانه وتعالى says uh, to Prophet Muhammad so by mercy from Allah O Muhammad you were lenient with them and if you had been rude in speech and harsh in heart they would have disbanded from about you. So bar pardon them and ask forgiveness for them and consult them in the matter. And when you have decided, then rely upon Allah. Indeed, Allah loves those who rely upon him. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, giving us an account, a testimony that the Prophet sallallahu is lenient to the Sahaba. To, he's lenient to the people around him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, we have a hadith from Ummuna Aisha. This is an account from inside the house of the Prophet ﷺ, where the uh, Ummuna Aisha is saying, "Ma daraba Rasulullah shayin qatu biyade." So Ummuna Aisha is saying, our uh, you know the wife of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, she said, "The Prophet ﷺ, he never beat, you know, and I strike the word anyone because that's what you find in the translation. The the proper word that's being used in Arabic is shayin, which is anything, not anyone, anything." So that be it a person, you know, or an animal, or even a door. He didn't even slam a door, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, she said, he never beat anything ever with his hand, neither a woman nor a servant, but only in the case when he had been fighting in the cause of Allah. Meaning when he met enemies in the battleground, that's when he used his hand to strike uh, the, the one who's in front of him. But sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, other than that, in his house, he never uh, beat anything. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is tell, this tells you, you know, uh, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam behaved him, himself in his house with his family, with the closest people uh, around him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, uh, the the Hadith also keeps going. Uh, Umm Aisha keeps going, and she says he never took revenge for anything unless the things made and uh, violable by Allah were violated. He then took revenge for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When there is a had, when there is um, you know uh, one of the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa taala that was vi violated, then Allah or uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam applied the ruling on whoever violated. Uh, you know, uh, uh, basically a had from Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that's that's the extent where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, kind of um, uh, acted. He never made it for his sake. It was just when uh, Allah's commands were being violated. Subhanallah. Another account from inside the house is coming from Anas, the, the servant of the Prophet He says, He said, I served the Prophet at Medina for 10 years. He never said to me, Uff, nor did he say to me, why did you do this or why you did not do this? SubhanAllah, this is, this is not his child. This is not, you know, a family member, even though Anas was also considered as uh, a son to the Prophet Sallallahu um, But it tells you that he's saying that I was a boy uh, that was serving the Prophet Sallallahu I was young, I was bound to make mistakes, yet the Prophet Sallallahu never told me, why did you do this? Nor why did you, you didn't do this? SubhanAllah. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu conducted himself. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu always said, and this is a measure for us, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, خيركم خيركم The best amongst you is the, the best amongst you to their families. You know, SubhanAllah, I cannot uh, think about this and not think about uh, the situation where we are in right now, where we are confined to our own houses, where we have like, uh, you know, we're not leaving in our houses, we're spending these extended times with our families. Are we the best to our families? You know, we hear in the news that, uh, for example, that uh, uh, domestic violence is on the rise right now because, uh, you know, uh, 
women and children who are vulnerable are being confined with abusive partners at their homes. Subhanallah. Yet the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us completely the opposite. He's telling us, Khayrukum, the best amongst you, is the one who is the best to their families. Subhanallah. Because why did he say that? And to me, like this is a, a litmus test for us. This is how we can judge our own selves. We don't need somebody to tell us where we are. We could always test ourselves with this hadith from the Prophet. You know, when we go out, we could always put that face, that mask. We could always hide behind that kind of personality and we you know we laugh and we were, we're funny and all that kind of stuff then we go back home then that's the real us that the, that's the real you know uh, personality we have if we are the worst towards those people uh, at home then that's who we are and that's why the prophet ﷺ is telling us if you uh, are not um, you know uh, uh, you're you're the best of you is not coming out to your fa family, then something wrong with you. You need to fix that. You have a problem. You're not following the teaching of the Prophet Subhanallah. You know, we have another hadith that's teaching us uh, the lenience of the Prophet with the Sahaba. So this is still his lenience dealing with Muslims. You know, this is an account from inside the masjid. And, you know, as we go over it, think about uh, how we would conduct ourselves in our message, you know, uh, when they open, inshallah, soon. You know, Muawiyah uh, ibn al-Hakam was uh, reporting that he said, while I was in salat with the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man in the congregation sneezed, and I responded uh, with, yarhamukum Allah. So they were praying behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, somebody in the salat sneezed, uh, Muawiyah said, yarhamukum Allah. The people stared at me. Now the Sahaba got distracted, and then they looked to the, to the men in the middle of the prayer with the disapproving looks. So I said, you know, he was making it more here. He, I said, may, may my mother lose me. Why are you staring at me? Subhanallah. Now he's, he's in the middle of the salah. You know, he said, Allah. They looked at him. Now he, he went uh, one step further. You know, thereupon they began to strike their thighs with their hands. Now the Sahaba are completely distracted you know, are completely angry with him. They started to strike their thighs with their hand. When I saw them urge him uh, to me to remain silent, I became angry, but I restrained myself. When the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concluded his salah, you know, subhanAllah, think, of, you know, when, as I'm going through this hadith, think about these incidents that happen with, uh, in our message when kids are too loud, when somebody is running, when somebody's phone is ringing, you know, and how everybody gave him the look after the salat, you know, think about it and then see the reaction of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam concluded his salat, I have never before seen an instructor. So this is Muawiyah is talking. He said, I have never before seen an instructor who gave a better instruction than he. May my father and my father and my mother be sac sacrificed for him. He neither remonstrated me, nor beat me, nor abused me. He simply said, it is not permissible to talk during salah because it consists of glorifying Allah, declaring his greatness, uh, as well as reciting of the Quran. Or he said words to that effect. So this is as much what the Prophet, the whole congregation got disturbed. And then this man made it worse by you know, following up to them and speaking to them. Yet the Prophet Sallallahu he, you know, didn't even give him any looks, you know, subhanAllah. And this is the description of the man who was in that position, not another Sahabi saying, you know, from his perspective, how he saw it. No, this is the man that, you know, committed, you know, this mistake, how he uh, saw the reaction of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I said, Oh, Allah, uh, Allah's messenger, I have be, uh, but been recently, uh, 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 I have recently accepted Islam, and Allah has favored us with Islam. There are still some people among us who got, uh, go to consult uh, soothsayers. He said, do not consult them. Then I said, there are some of us who are guided by omens. He said, these things which come uh, to their minds, they should not be influenced by them. So that's the full hadith. But what I wanted to focus on is that first part that the man, you know, even though the whole congregation got disturbed, the prophet, he, he himself, he said, I have never seen a better instructor, uh, you know, who, had, who gave better instruction 
than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. SubhanAllah. You know, this is, you know, this is a perfect example of the lenience of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Giving excuses to our brothers and sisters should be one of the biggest lessons we look, uh, you know, uh, at this. Look at this man, SubhanAllah. It turns out that he just became Muslim. He was just new to Islam, you know, SubhanAllah. So no one knew from the Sahaba that he was new Muslim. I'm sure they would have behaved differently. But SubhanAllah, you know, the, the reaction of the Prophet, because the Prophet Sallallahu was the best, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he knew this man could be a new Muslim. He knew this is how we should treat people to strengthen their faith in Islam and to get them to understand the beauty of Islam, SubhanAllah. You know, so he did, the, the man didn't knew, didn't know he shouldn't speak, you know, SubhanAllah. But he was so impressed with how the Prophet Sallallahu treated him. He made him feel safe to the point that he started asking the Prophet on other matters, you know, you know SubhanAllah. You know, so he got the advice from the Prophet he felt like, wow, you know, this is a very good setting to go and ask and learn about my deen. This man is so, you know, uh, so good of an, an, an instructor, instructor, I should take advantage of that, subhanAllah. You know, another example, dealing, uh, you know, with another case, the Prophet Sallallahu dealing with a Bedouin who suffocated him. You know, in this hadith, Anas, you know, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu is telling us, he said, I was walking with the Prophet Sallallahu and he was wearing a Najrani cloak with a rough collar. A Bedouin man caught him up, uh, caught up with him, then violently pulled him by, by his cloak, causing the cloak to tear, and then leaving, uh, uh, you know, the collar hanging on the neck of the Prophet ﷺ. There was obvious marks on the neck of the Prophet ﷺ. You know, Anas is saying, I looked at the message of uh, uh, Allah Taala, um, you know, uh, at his neck. And the cloak's collar had left marks from how rough he would he, would, he has been snatched. Then he said, Oh Muhammad, you know, this is the Bedouin talking to the Prophet, Sallam, order him. He says, Oh Muhammad, order them that I be given from the wealth of Allah that, that you have. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to him, smiled, and then ordered that he would be given something. SubhanAllah. You know, look at the mercy of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, um, for 14 centuries, the Muslim scholars here deduced from these incidents not in, in how merciful, uh, you know, subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu how forbearing he, uh, he is, you know. If, you know, how he was trying to be a, a role model to the Sahaba. You know, the Sahaba basically were learning from these incidents. They were seeing how the Prophet Sallallahu is dealing with others, and they were internalizing this teaching. From him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was even putting guidelines to the rulers that are coming after him that they should be tolerant with their people, endure their physical and verbal abuse, and overlook their disrespect in order to warm their hearts towards Islam. You know, this is subhanallah a great teaching from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But how did he deal with non-Muslims? You know, with enemies of Islam. You know. The story of Thumama ibn Uthal is a very powerful example of his leniency, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thumama ibn Uthal was the chief of Banu Hanifa, who had assassinated a number of uh, the companions. He killed some of the companions, and he even plotted to kill the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he permitted that if they meet Thumama, the Sahaba meet Thumama on the battleground, they are allowed to kill him, you know, because of his you know, uh, crimes that he committed to the Sahaba, you know, that he killed many Sahabis. But the Sahaba took him as a captive, you know, and then they brought him to the Prophet So the, uh, the Sahaba ordered them to fasten him to a column in the masjid, in the mosque. You know, they fastened uh, uh, Thumama uh, to the column of the masjid. And then what the Prophet did next is amazing because the Prophet was bringing him his personal milk from his own she camel, uh, and then he would order uh, ordering uh, the Sahaba to take it to Thumama each day, and then each day the Prophet Sallallahu would go out, and then he would ask him, and he would say, you know, Malak ya Thumama, you know, he would say, you know, what's up with you ya Thumama? Then Thumama would reply, Khair ya Muhammad, you know, good, I'm bringing good ya Muhammad, I'm not bringing any animosity or anything but uh, let me tell you in taqtul taqtul 
if you kill, you kill somebody who has a tribe, a big tribe, a leader of a tribe, that they will come for re to revenge his uh, death. وَإِن تَعْفُوا تَعْفُوا عَنْ شَاكَرْ And if you forgive, you forgive somebody who will, uh, you know, be, uh, you know, uh, recognizing uh, that uh, that you, uh, uh, you know, forgave him and that will not, you know, uh, attack you anymore. وَإِن تَسْأَلْ مَالًا تَعْتَى And if you want money, I'll give you money. You know, subhanAllah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu left him. Then the second day, the, he did the same thing. The Prophet Sallallahu asked him, what's up, Ya Thumama? Same thing. He had the same reply. If you kill me, you kill me somebody with, with a big tribe. If you forgive me, then I will be, you know, thankful. And if you want money, I'll give you money. Third day, same thing. Thumama, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu asked him. And then he had the, uh, the same reply. Then the Prophet Sallallahu looked up the Sahaba. He said, let Thumama go. أَطْلِقُوهُ فَقَدْ عَفَوْتُ عَنْكَ يَا ثُمَامَ Let, th uh, let Thumama go, uh, go, I forgave him. When that happened, Thumama left the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. And then he went to one of the date uh, palms uh, uh, gardens on the outskirts of Medina, where there was a well. And then he took a bath and then changed his clothes. And then he came back to the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting there. And then he said, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, his message. And then he said these beautiful words. He said, O Muhammad, I swear by Allah that there was no face on the surface of the earth more disliked by me than yours. But now your face has become the most beloved face to me. By Allah, there was no religion more disliked by me than yours. But now it is the most beloved religion to me. By Allah, there was no town more disliked by me than your town. But now it is the most beloved town to me. SubhanAllah. You know, you look at the teaching of the Prophet ﷺ. He was not out for blood. This man killed his Sahaba. This man wanted to kill him. Yet the Prophet ﷺ still had hope that he might turn around. He still had hope that this man might become a Muslim. He gave him a chance, three days. You know, maybe like, you know, some, some other people, they might not give him three days. And then after three days, they might say, you know what, forget it. This man is not coming around. He killed our Sahaba. That's it. We need to take revenge. Yet the Prophet ﷺ, after the three days, he forgave him. Even in, some, in his speech, there was some threat. You know, he was saying to the Prophet ﷺ, if you kill me, my tribe will come after you. SubhanAllah. Yet the Prophet Sallallahu forgave him and that turned his heart, you know, uh, 180 degrees. Look at the beautiful words that he said to the Prophet Sallallahu This is an account, this is a testimony from an enemy of Islam that turned around just because of the lenience of the Prophet Sallallahu You know, how was his lenience with someone who want, wanted to kill him a few moments ago, SubhanAllah. You know, we have this amazing account that uh, when the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were, were coming back from Ghazwat, uh, the, uh, Riqa, the battle of that Riqa, which occurred in the seventh Hijri year, the Messenger of Allah and his companions dismounted, you know, in, in a valley, uh, and they were uh, dispersed to, so that they could go and find shades, right? Like they are in des the desert, there is no forest or anything, so they had like to look around for small bushes and trees to uh, to get some shade to rest in the middle of the day. So it was very hot. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came under a leafy tree and hang his sword uh, on it. Uh, the army slept for a while, but after a while they heard the Prophet Sallallahu calling for them. And this is the account. So Jabir ibn Abdullah says, we came to the Prophet Sallallahu and sitting with him was a Bedouin man. Uh, Al-Hakim add, uh, adds that uh, his name is Ghawrath. The messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, this person drew my sword as I slept and I uh, woke up and I found him that he was uh, kind of pointing his sword to the Prophet Sallallahu And then he said to the Prophet Sallallahu he said, are you afraid of me? Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, no. Then the man asked, who will protect you from me? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah. Then the man asked, are you, uh, are, who will protect you from me? He said, Allah, three times. Every time he asked him, the Prophet Sallallahu you know, confidently replies, uh, Allah. Then, the sword fell on the third time when the Prophet ﷺ said Allah, the sword fell from the hand of the man and the Prophet ﷺ put, uh, picked it up and took it and he looked at the man and he said, 
who will protect you from me? Then the man said, be the better victor, subhanAllah. He said, will you now testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah? He said, I will promise to, uh, to never fight you, nor be with the people that fight you. Then the Prophet Sallallahu let him go. And so the man went to his people and said, I have come to you from the best of people. Uh, uh, Jabir uh, was adding in this hadith, he said the messenger of Salah, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never punished the man after that. SubhanAllah. This is how lenient the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a man who wanted to kill him. And then, you know, he failed. And then he asked him to become a Muslim. And then he denied. And then he still let him go. SubhanAllah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is, uh, you know, this tells you how amazing uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. How lenient he was. How he conducted himself. How he embodied this character trait. Inshallah, next time when we talk, we will touch more on the lenience of the Prophet ﷺ, and we will touch on more of his character traits. Subhanallah. But look at the and this incident also, the reliance of the Prophet ﷺ on, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was completely unshaken. He was completely, you know, relying on Allah. Every time he asked him, right away, Allah will protect me. You know, three times the man asks, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah will protect me to the point that the sword fell down from the hand of the man. Subhanallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sayyidina Muhammad. You know, I hope in this session you got a little bit of uh, an idea about the physical description of the Prophet Sallallahu The way he spoke, how majestic was his silence, and how, you know, uh, splendid was his speech, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How from far he looked so, uh, you know, handsome, and how from close he was the best among the companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How his face was better uh, than the moon, Subhanallah. According to the Sahaba, when they look at him, they look at the moon. He was more radiant than the moon. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How when a man sees him, he's non-Muslim. He doesn't know him. He enters. He asks, "Where is Muhammad?" He. They say, "This is Muhammad." He says, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah." But you know, I swear, bear witness that uh, you know this is a prophet of Allah. Why? He said, "This is not the face of a liar." Subhanallah. Look at how lenient he is to his enemies, to the people who killed his companions. To the people who wanted to kill him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Look at his, how merciful he was to his family. You know that he embodied the, the his own saying that the best amongst you is uh, the one uh, uh, who's behaving best to his family, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, subhanallah. This is uh, you know um, you know we cannot give him justice in, in just like few minutes when we talked about to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But hopefully this is. Uh, an introduction to trying to connect with the Prophet Sallallahu We need to ask ourselves again and again, isn't he worthy Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of our lo love and reverence? You know, we need to make time to know him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to make it a priority in our life. We need to start in these blessed nights. We should not delay it. We need to start and connect with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, we need to send salawat. One of the things to show him love is to remember him through uh, making salat on him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, in the Quran, he says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala, ala nabi. And, uh, Allah sends his salat, graces, honors, blessings, mercy on the Prophet, and also the angels too. Ask Allah to bless and forgive him. O oh, you who believe, ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Send your salat uh, uh, on him. You know, ask Allah to bless him, and you should greet him with the Islamic way of greeting, Assalamu alaikum, you know, Salimu taslima. Subhanallah, this is something that we could practice in these last 10 nights as well. Remember that he was sent as a mercy to mankind, to us specifically. Like we need to feel it in our hearts, you know, that personal connection that this man came as a mercy to me specifically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we have not sent you. O Muhammad, accept as a mercy to the worlds, the world of mankind and the world of jinn kind. The Prophet ﷺ came as a mercy to everybody, not to the Muslims, not to the Arabian Peninsula, not to the Middle East. He came to as a mercy to every single one of us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, remember that obeying the messenger of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is our pathway to obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
he who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. But those who turn away, we have not sent you over them as a guardian. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the, the, uh, if you want to obey Allah, you need to obey the messenger. It's a prerequisite. You cannot ignore the messenger of Allah. You cannot you know, uh, uh, disconnect with them and claim to be obeying Allah. You know, but if they turn away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, is saying to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are not a guardian over them. You know, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this to the Prophet? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so grieved when people turned away, he was so grieved that subhanAllah, and then he was even kind of questioning himself. He was hard on himself that, you know, that he was not able to guide these people. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's saying, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet, you're not a guardian over them. Don't kill yourself over them. You know, you are doing your part. If they obey you, then that's good to them. Otherwise, you know, you fulfilled your responsibility. The rest is their problem. SubhanAllah. We need to connect with the word of Allah. We need to connect with the Quran. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu brought us. He uh, struggled so hard for us to get the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala the way it is, uh, as authentic as it is right now. So we need to take advantage of that. We need to show that we care about the word of Allah, and that's our gateway to loving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A way that we revere that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, uh, you know, so much to deliver the Quran to us and deliver the message to us subhanallah you know al-khabbab ibn al-arat when he was talking about the quran al-khabbab ibn al-arat was a was a, a sahabi was one of the early sahabi and was a teacher of the quran he said you know it's so important to uh, he said get, get closer to allah as much as you can with any way you can and know that you will not get closer to him with anything more beloved to him than his book his words that he sent through his beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam do what you can to get closer to allah through fasting salah dua charity you know name it but the most important mean you know uh, to get to closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the, his word through the quran if you lo love allah you have to love the quran you have to love the quran that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam worked so hard to deliver to us subhanallah you, you have to love being with the Qur'an. You have to love praying with the Qur'an, subhanAllah. You have to love reciting the Qur'an. You know, this is the word of Allah that were revealed to his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, embodied this message, that he was a, a perfect representation of the Qur'an. Sayyida Aisha said, uh, describing the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and I conclude with this, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ His mannerism, was the Quran. You want to learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read the Quran. You want to connect with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read the Quran. You want to obey the, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, obey the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and connect with the Quran. You know, this is our gateway to uh, to succeeding in this dunya and this akhirah. And I hope that you delivered the message and I hope you benefit from it. And I hope we can have other sessions where we can keep talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the uh, uh, you know uh, perspective that we're trying to delve into the mannerism and the character trait of the prophet we're trying to know this the human side of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a little bit different than a seer classes where we're going through historic events this is more like uh, you know taking a character trait of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then trying to delve into it to try to create that connection with him uh, so that we can attain his love sallallahu alaihi wasallam أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاكم الله خيرا for your attention